This video is about a simple and low cost solar pumping system that we are testing here in Senegal. Uh, behind us is the, is the Gambia River, which is a uh, potential source of water for, for irrigation, and we want to use this system for irrigation. Uh, first, a little bit of background. Um, uh, as most people know, the, the price of solar panels has come down dramatically in the last couple of years. So this is, this is what many of us have been waiting for, for for a long time, for the price of solar panels to come down so that they could be used in many more applications. And now at last it's happening. But this means there, there's some catching up to be done so that the other uh, materials that go along with solar panels uh, can also be uh, 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 reasonably cost uh, so that the overall system will not be too expensive. In the case of solar pumping, there are some very good, uh, well-made, reliable uh, solar pumps on the market, uh, but they're very expensive. So a typical system now would be in the thousands of dollars, even though the solar panels uh, that are part of the system might be a few hundred dollars, you might still be paying thousands of dollars for a complete uh, solar pumping system including electronics and so on. Uh, in some situations th that might be necessary but what we're hoping to do is to demonstrate a system where at low cost uh, anybody can can put together the components for a simple and reliable pumping system. Um, so what, uh, what we've done here, first of all let's look at the the panels. We In this case we have Four, uh, five times 80 watts, a total of 400 watts of panels mounted on a specially made uh, wheeled cart. The cart was made uh, in the nearby town of Kedugu. It took about a day. It cost about $130, including all the materials and workmanship to put together this cart. Now the cart serves several purposes. Let me demonstrate that, that stand back a bit please. The cart is quite light in weight so uh, one person can easily push it around. I'll just remove the, the this, what's blocking the wheel here. And we want to move it around for several reasons. Uh, first of all the, the, the irrigation site will be uh, some distance from where people are living and if it were left if it were left uh, out, outdoors uh, at, at night, the panels could easily be stolen. So with this system, it's very easy to roll the panels back to a secure location in the evening. Besides that, uh, the, it, it's easy to move the panel into the sunlight. A few times a day, not, not constantly, but a few times during the day, the position of the panels can be changed to avoid any shadows from trees and even uh, to optimize the output of the pump because besides moving the panels we can tilt them. So for example in the morning hours we can tilt the panel towards the rising sun, in the evening hours towards the setting sun and in midday we can leave the panels in a more or less horizontal position to capture the maximum sunlight at midday. So in, in other words, it's, it's a manual tracking system. The, the cart allows us to do manual tracking of the sun and that should give us uh, an increase in, in output through the day of maybe 20 to 25 percent extra output. Uh, and also uh, for this pumping application, it means that the, the, uh, the output of the pump will be more constant during the, during the pumping hours. Uh, it won't be completely constant, but it will be for at least six hours of the day. As long as we can orient the panels towards the sun, we should have a fairly constant pumping rate for several hours of the day. 
let's talk about the pump now. As I mentioned earlier, uh, panels are cheap and easily available. Even here in Senegal, in the, in the nearby town of Kedugu, there's at least six roadside shops that are selling panels similar to these, which people are uh, placing on their rooftops to have a little bit of uh, electricity in the house. So the technology is, is, is widespread now, it's familiar, but as I said, what's missing are some of the other equipment to go with solar panels to make it more useful. In the case of pumping, um, I set out to find a, a cheap and reliable pump that could be directly connected to solar panels, preferably without batteries. Batteries would be an extra expense and extra complication that we would prefer not to deal with. Um, I did some research and I found that one of the applications where cheap, uh, relatively cheap and reliable uh, pumps are being used is marine bilge pumps. So uh, I searched around, there are many models available. The problem with most uh, bilge pumps is that they're designed for very low head, in some cases just one or two meters. But after some searching, I found this particular model, which is a, a well-known brand of marine bilge pump. Uh, the company is, at least the brand name is, call, is called Rule. The company has changed hands a couple of times. <coughs> I'm not sure who owns it now. But uh, these pumps have been manufactured in, in the same form for, for years and it's, it's, a, it's a proven, reliable design. Um, this one is, is called the Model 4000, which means it's supposed to deliver up to 4,000 US gallons per hour, which translates to about 15,000 liters per hour, which is quite a substantial output except that you only get that when your, uh, when your height of pumping is zero, which of course is never the case. In our particular case here, uh, the garden site, we're not in the garden site, but it will be in a place similar to where we are. We're about four meters above the level of the, of the river now. And the river will continue to recede during the dry season, so we might have a total pumping head of five to six meters. And that's assuming that we can keep the, the, the losses in the pipes uh, to a minimum, hopefully less than a meter. So this particular pump uh, can uh, pump up to a total head of about uh, eight meters. And that's the main reason why this one is of interest uh, for irrigation, whereas most of the smaller bilge pumps, the, the, the head is just too low. So this one, uh, we think uh, it can do the job. We're still in the process of testing it. There may be other ones out there. Uh, I'm still looking myself uh, that, uh, that will have uh, even better characteristics in terms of irrigation. But this one looks like it might do the job in certain situations. So it's a simple, it's a very simple uh, pump. There's a removable um, uh, trash screen on the bottom. And here is the pump impeller, which spins when it's turned on. So it sucks in water through this opening. The water goes it into an inner housing, and it comes out through this uh, outlet to which we've attached uh, a flexible pipe. So this is easily uh, removable to inspect the pump or remove any trash that might be blocking the, the inlet. So inside, there's simply uh, uh, a sealed uh, DC motor with the impeller attached. There are two leads coming out. There are no electronics. It's a, it's a brush motor, no electronics. That means that the lifetime is limited. Um, somewhere in the literature it talks about the number of hours of use that you can expect from this pump. I can't remember exactly the number, but it would basically correspond to about one year of daily use during daylight hours and if this if this pump uh, can give us one year of continuous use we'll, we'll be satisfied um, uh, because this pump uh, according to our estimation could irrigate about one half hectare of garden and the revenue from that uh, from that garden uh, it could easily pay to replace the pump on a yearly basis and incidentally 
the, the, the main advantage of this system is that you don't have to buy fuel. I, th I guess that's kind of obvious. But if somebody were to, uh, the alternative to this, which is currently available around here, would be a small gasoline driven uh, pump, which you would be spending uh, several dollars a day uh, for fuel. So just what you spend on fuel in a year would come close to the entire cost of this system, which doesn't use any fuel. The pump itself uh, in North America is less than two hundred dollars. These, uh, the panels here, five hundred watts, which is probably more than what we sorry four hundred watts. It's probably more than what we actually need for this pump. Uh, the 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 uh, in areas where there's competitive pricing. Uh, uh, panels ca can be bought now for one dollar per watt or less. I paid a little more for these because uh, I didn't have time to look for the uh, for the cheapest source of supply. But if we say that the uh, that the panels cost four hundred dollars, the cart costs one hundred and fifty dollars, the pump costs uh, uh, two hundred dollars. We're up to $750 now. Add the, the pipes depending on your situation. So for under $1,000, we have a complete uh, solar powered pumping system. As I said, that should irrigate about one half hectare with uh, zero fuel costs. Um, although, uh, as I said, we may expect to replace the pump possibly on a, on a yearly basis. The, the panels should last much longer than, than a year. Uh, there is no electronic controller. In the, there's no electronics of any kind in the system. There's a simple uh, switch and circuit breaker, which is, a, which is just a normal household circuit breaker that cost uh, $6 or something like that. So there are no complex electronics to, that can fail or that would have to, uh, that would need uh, you know, a qualified uh, technician uh, to, uh, to repair or replace. Let me explain a little more the, uh, this uh, gadgetry surrounding the pump. It looks complicated, but it isn't. As I mentioned, the pump is only that. Uh, so we could put this directly in the river and it would pump water. That's all we really need. The, why, why we've added a few uh, bits and pieces here is to give the pump some protection. So the pump is sitting inside a rubber bucket, um, which will, uh, will uh, uh, avoid putting it, for example, on, in the muddy uh, uh, bottom of the river. It should uh, reduce the amount of, of uh, trash and debris coming into the pump. So the pump, it will be immersed in water, but within that bucket. And then this, this tube, which is a motorcycle uh, tube, uh, is attached to the bucket to keep it floating at the surface. So that will, as I said, reduce the trash coming into the pump. It also will keep our electrical connection out of the water. This is our, uh, the cable that will bring the, the power from the solar panels and it's connected to the, to the two wire uh, leads of the pump through a simple screw connector. Uh, I wasn't able to get a, a proper waterproof connector here, but I simply used a screw connector and I've, I've uh, covered it with, uh, with a waterproof glue that should protect it to some extent from water. But in any case, we'll try to keep that connection out of the water. If it gets splashed from time to time, it's not a problem, but we're not going to immerse this connection in water. So by attaching it to the handle of the bucket, this electrical connection will remain out of the water while the pump will always be in the water. You can see why I'm wearing rubber boots. Uh, we're at the bank of the river. The pump is now uh, floating inside its bucket within the river. So the pump is immersed in water and it's ready to start. And the outlet hose is connected. Is, is filling up with water. There are enough holes in the bucket that, that the water keeps flowing 
uh, in, into the bucket and keeps it full of water. And this is how we expect that the pump will, will, will spend, spend the whole day like this pumping water. So here we are pumping water. So far so good. And we're going to use this uh, bucket just to uh, estimate the, the flow rate coming from the pump. Then this is going. What we're doing now is estimating the output of the pump. This is very crude, but we have somebody up the tree holding a pipe. Uh, so the outlet is about four meters off the ground. So now we have a total of, of about uh, eight meters of head. And as expected, the, uh, the flow rate is reduced as compared to what we were getting at ground level. But uh, there's still a, a, a reasonable uh, rate of pumping and we'll, do, we'll use that to make some calculations of the area that can be irrigated.